Hi Lux here. This is going to be a video going over my workflow with the ore picker drill head that I have been working on. Now before I get started on that, I am really getting tired of calling this thing the ore picker. I feel like there's definitely a better possible name for it, so if this video gets a decent number of views and you guys are interested in it, uh, I think it'd be pretty cool if you could leave a name suggestion in the comments and uh, vote for any that you see down there that you think are good and then I'll update the blueprint file to reflect that. Now for this video I have loaded a fresh save and pasted the blueprint in so that way I can make sure that anything uh, that might not transfer correctly with the blueprint will be addressed in the video. So, as you can see, we've got a cobalt deposit directly below us here. I'm going to be drilling down to get that. And probably the first thing that I should touch on when I pasted this blueprint, the drill depth pistons reverted. They lost two decimal points off of here. So you need to make sure that if you are going down to drill, this is your speed. This is the safe speed. There are 30 pistons on here. The other thing, I can see it's about 80 meters below me. So I have my drill pistons set to lower the drill 2.6 meters per piston. This should get me right around the area that I want to be with that cobalt, and then I can fine tune it from there. So I'm going to get the pilot hole drilled, and then I will be back, and I'm going to go step by step through how I relocate this drill to the second drill location and go down and get the rest of the ore so I'll be back in a minute alright so we are just now starting to eject some stone on this pilot hole and I just wanted to take a second to show you guys just how much ice this is now it's still gonna carve some more out you can see the taper perimeter area is just starting to get below the surface of the ice but even with that, if I come over here to one of these large cargo containers and just filter it to ice, this was empty when I started this pilot hole, so we have picked up <laughs> quite quite a bit of ice here. Um, I'm probably going to end up ejecting some of this by the time we get down to the cobalt, because we just, uh, it's a good chance, let's see, I've got eight large cargo containers on either side, and I think that was five cargo containers full of ice already so we'll see it's gonna eject all of the stone out either way so uh we'll we'll just see how it goes um be back in a little bit all right so coming back because i do i have to dump ice it's there's no way i can go without not dumping it here if i uh See, I'll just filter this to large cargo containers. So there are 16 large cargo containers on this vessel, and if I go through here, they are all filling up with ice. So thankfully this is a creative save. I can just pull it all and then go dump it somewhere nearby and not worry about it. So I'm just going to empty all of these out. But that's just a pretty good demonstration of how much mass this drill head can actually move. Um, I definitely wasn't expecting it to actually fill up all of these cargo containers before it really even got below the surface of the ice lake, but that's exactly what it did. So I'll just come right over here and we will dump all of that ice and I'm, I'm guessing that magnesium is just some that got pasted over with the blueprint that I missed. Maybe it was in like a seat or something like that or one of the drill heads. So we've emptied all that out and we're gonna just let this thing keep doing its stuff. I may wind up um, off camera here just setting some of these sorters to start spitting the ice out so that way I don't have to keep coming back and manually clearing the cargo containers but Really, it's almost all the way through the ice, so that shouldn't be much of a problem going forward. I'll be back when this is done. Alright, so we have reached the depth that we're trying to. Now, as it was going down, I did see that 
I overshot the depth of, by actually quite a large margin. So I adjusted the maximum depth settings as it was going. And we can see there are two deposits. I went with the larger of the two deposits that was a little bit deeper. So you can see that visually we're completely covering that with our drill head. The top ones will probably actually scrape the bottom of the smaller deposit a little bit. And the method I used to adjust the depth settings was I just came right here to one of these pistons. You can see its current depth right here. So I saw it at 1.6 meters and I just gave it a little bit more to get straight down on here. So now with it here, what we're going to do is we are going to start engaging our horizontal drills. So I have this set up in two stages. Reason for this is because I want the upper piston, which is attached directly to the drill head, and on top of conveyor tubes. I want this to be fully extended before I start moving these bottom three pistons. Uh, in my mind, I don't know how true this is, but I feel like having this be stationary rather than uh, mobile while these bottom three are extending will give it more stability while it's on top of these conveyor tubes. So I broke it into two stages for that reason. So this is going to take just a couple minutes. I'm going to fully extend these, get this completely cored out, and then I will be back when I'm retracting this and about to relocate the drill head to its second drill location. Alright, so looking at these horizontal pistons, we can see that our stage 2 pistons are now at 10 meters. <clears throat> now we do have some things to kind of check out here. This was the higher elevation deposit that I pointed out when we were deciding our initial horizontal depth. It looks like I made a good call as far as that's concerned because it doesn't go very deep. It's relatively small. Um, the secondary deposit, if we go in here, it extends all the way through to this point. Uh, doesn't really show any signs of getting smaller, but in addition to that, we can see that in the wall here, we have another one, and as soon as this drill head passes, we'll be able to see how it's kind of uh, staircase tapering. It goes up into the ceiling of our drill area here, and then we have this area, which this looks pretty light. Um, what we can do to really see if there's anything back here is just get a hand drill and just do a couple ticks up in here and we can see that's actually a pretty heavy deposit. So if we wanted to get the absolute most out of this, what would make sense to do would be to elevate this right now and drill a second horizontal layer out. Uh, I think for the purposes of this video, just because I'm really trying to test the capabilities of the drill and everything, I'm going to do that. So up top here, I've changed our cargo capacity from 16 large cargo containers up to 30. I don't know if we'll need that many. I'm hoping not. I, I mainly just wanted to overhead so that it wouldn't overflow. Um, I'm going to cut the video here and retract these horizontal drills and just kind of move it up a little bit. I'll, uh, I'll include a little clip of me fine-tuning the settings once I get these retracted for my second drill spot and you'll be able to see that. Alright, so we are fully extended once again. Uh, we can verify that by checking one of these pistons. Our stage 2 pistons are at 10 meters, so let's get this thing retracted real quick. I'm going to press shift K just to open up my terminal remotely. It's a lot easier than interacting with pistons while they're moving. So first thing I'm going to do is turn off my rotor. Then I'm going to go to my stage 1 horizontal. And for retracting these once again, uh, for stage 1 I'm going to go 1.2 meters. Hit reverse. For stage 2, I'm going to remove two decimal points off of here and that will cause this to collapse up pretty quickly. Once that's collapsed up, we're going to be retracting the entire drill head up above ground to relocate. 
so I'm going to go to my depth pistons and I still do have the velocity adjusted from last time so the only thing I need to do is take my minimum distance and put that to zero. I'm going to leave my maximum distance at 1.8 since I know that's how deep our first hole was. And while that goes up let's get a good inspection of the results here. So this was the first deposit that we saw and then there was the one that kind of went up into the ceiling here and you can see it actually extends a fair bit around so I think that what I'm gonna do is aim kind of right in the middle of these two blocks here so I'm just gonna put one in the terrain and come back here until I feel like we're out of this hole which hopefully here is good yeah, that should be fine. So then we can take this and bring it up. Still have it? Yeah, all right. So we'll bring this up, unless it doesn't want to come up. There we go. So we're just gonna bring this up the side here. Right there is good for now, we have our marker. And then I'm gonna get inside of my driver's seat control panel here and work on collapsing the drill in its entirety. So I'm gonna hit one on the keypad which engages the two piston or the two rotors pardon me on either side of all of the pistons. Uh, that will begin to very slowly lower uh, until it hits those two landing gears. I don't think we'll have any clearance issues. Hopefully we won't with those uh, large cargo containers I've added there. Um, once this thing gets folded up, I'm going to engage the different landing gears and disengage the ones that I have. So that's folding right now. I'm going to try and get my next spot marked out with this right here if possible. So it looks like I do have space. I'm going to come up one block. Let's see, that tire is going to be kind of in the way. Let's see if we can work around it. So we'll come out 10. Let's see. Get rid of this real quick. Yeah, 10 is going to go into the tire. So we'll come out 5. And then just give a little bit of a buffer here. All right, so that was five blocks out. So we want to come out another five from here. All this rubble on the way. three four and there is five all right so now we're ten blocks extended from our hole uh, we know that from the middle of one roughly it's 45 blocks over to the next so if we have ten on the edge here and the diameter of the hole is 20 blocks that's going to take 10 off of our distance and then 20 off of our distance which means that we want to come out 25 blocks from here. So come out 25 and then we had moved over how many blocks here? One, two, three. So we move over three blocks. All right. And this is going to be what we are trying to align with for our next hole. So uh, I'm going to delete all of this. And after I get this moved, um, I will, what I'm going to do is make GPS markers from the middle of one hole to the next, just so we can see if uh, using the GPS as a method for measuring hole to hole will work as well. Alright, so it looks like we may be having a clearance issue. Uh, let me get this fixed real quick and I will be back. Alright, so 
clearance issue has been fixed. We can see that these are touching now and ready to lock. So I'm going to get back in the control seat here and I'm going to hit 2 on my keyboard to lock that. Now on the third control panel, I'm going to extend out these pistons. These are going to be the pistons up on the top right here. So we'll see these landing gears are going to extend out. These will not always all touch. So I can see right now that I have three touching. This is really just so that there's overhead. Even if it's only one touching, that's normally good enough. And looks like I've got all four touching right there. I'm getting the control seat here and then I will press two to lock all of those feet and one to retract those pistons. That will pull the drill head up and keep those pistons from rocking around while we're moving. Now the next step is going to be the stability landing gear for while the drill is engaged. So I'm going to press 8 on the keyboard and that is going to release the lock. Now if I had done this correctly, which I haven't, uh, 7 should already be reversed so that it's pulling the craft towards the ground. So I'm going to do that now and unlock it once again and it's just going to start pulling that up. So now, the only thing left to do is disengage our parking brake, which is going to be 9 on the keyboard, and that will leave us free to move once again. And now we need to get positioned over that little X that we've made. That's going to be our next hole. Uh, so let, let me actually change the time of day here and make it a little bit brighter. There we go. Now we can actually see. Alright. And our current weight see I think it was about 2.5 million kilograms before that initial hole and we're at 9.3 right now so that's pretty substantial um, doesn't look like we're spitting out any more stone either so that may all be cobalt uh, there's a good possibility there's some ice in there as well but I have that set to eject on a few of the sorter blocks Right. We are just about centered on there, so let me straighten out just a bit more. And then we basically just want to have the line of conveyor blocks that you see right on top lined up over and then directly over the middle of the craft lined up over and that will put the tip of the drill head directly on that X. So straighten out now because we're pretty well, actually we could go over a bit more. I'm going to say that's definitely close enough for my liking. That seems pretty spot on. Let's get out and visually inspect real quick. So horizontally, pretty close. And down the line, yep. So that, that's definitely good enough for me. So I'm just going to remove these real quick. And now for engaging the drilling process. So what I'm going to look at right now, which we always always want to make sure we've done it uh, drill depth pistons velocity should be zero 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 seven and then horizontal we want to make sure that this is not 1.2 but point one two uh, it's like I can't follow my own instructions huh point one two and then stage two we want at point zero zero six seven now we remember from our first uh, drill hole that we want one horizontal drilling at 1.55 meters and one at 1 1.8 so I'm gonna again just go for 1.8 meters to start which is what I'm set at 
I have my velocity set correctly. So now I can use my hotbar. I'm going to engage the drills. I'm going to press 2 and unlock the landing gear that are holding the drill in place. I'm going to switch over to my third hotbar and unlock those. We'll get a little bit of a fun bounce there, but nothing has taken damage from that. And it uh, seems a lot better than having that kind of springy motion while you're, you're driving around. So then I'm going to hit 1 which is going to start turning this and opening it up and I will clip that part out to save some time. Oh and one thing I almost forgot to mention which we'll do that before this makes contact we want to hit 7 and I have this landing gear set to engage automatically so that as soon as it touches it will grab on. Uh, so now we can see it's green and then I'm gonna hit 7 again which will reverse the piston that's gonna keep the craft hold towards the ground as the drill presses. Uh, so that is everything that needs to be done while this is folding open. Um, so I'll be done, I'll be back when this is done opening up. Alright, so we can see that the rotor is completely in the open position. If we go down here we can see the reason it goes so slow is because the drills do make contact with the ground as it folds open. So now I'm gonna go ahead and press shift K go to my terminal and I want to engage the rotor so that we get some spin uh, it's gonna start to spin up and then as soon as it actually does start moving which it looks like it's good I'm gonna go ahead and reverse my drill depth pistons this will begin lowering it into the ground uh, so once we have gotten down to our depth I'm gonna be back I will see you then alright so just a quick update we can see that as we reach the depth on our second hole, we are really coming into that cobalt deposit that we saw. Um, let's go to the other side of this hole here. Does not appear to extend all the way across. So it looks like we are... Actually, no, maybe it does. Maybe it does. Kind of off-center. We'll see once the drill heads extend. But what I wanted to show you guys real quick, I went ahead and placed a few measurement blocks over here. So just to see across the top, the left and right sides are each 10 blocks with one block in the middle. Uh, I also have used this to place a marker. We'll get to that in a second. Coming down here into the hole, I have placed this, which I'm just going to leave up on screen for a moment. Just for anybody that's curious, easy to read measurement for a number of large armor blocks that we have drilled out for our pilot hole. So this is about how far and how deep we're going to be getting right on the other side of that wall there, which is where our drill is headed. Now, if we go back up to the top with our markers on, we can see the pilot drill hole marker here. I have a nice little distance measurement, so I can come right over here into the middle of my pistons, which doesn't have to be completely exact, but we can see we're right about 105, 106 meters, somewhere in that range, getting right under the top. So if you don't want to have to build armor blocks to measure out your holes you can easily use markers and probably even a hundred meters and still not have too much overlap uh, so that's just kind of some useful information for anybody that wants to try and use a system like this nice way to measure distance between your drilling holes so that you get minimal overlap when you're coming into the deposit so I'm gonna let this continue down uh, I will give you guys a quick little look again after phase one has fully extended and before I start extension on the phase two pistons. Alright so our stage one pistons are fully extended and I'm gonna add some annotations to the video after I upload it but I did notice at this point that the primary piston um, the conveyor junction that was attached to it had taken some damage. Now, uh, just kind of looking in here, I think I actually missed a decimal point when I was fixing this earlier. So for the horizontal stage one pistons, you should definitely have an extra zero in there if you don't want to damage your drill, uh, your horizontal drills. But this is what we're looking like at stage one. So let's see, there is our pilot hole. So we can't, we first drilled over in this direction. We can see the lower deposit that we were chasing 
coming right through here, which is great. And then when we move up a layer after this, we can see the other deposit coming through right here. Now, in addition to this, if we look down, let's see, there's an entire secondary cobalt deposit below the upper one. So there is just a ton of cobalt all right here. Um, for this video, I think I'm going to just stick to extending the pistons all the way out where we already had in our pilot hole. If you guys want me to make another video showing this area with all of the cobalt extracted and how much was actually down here, I'd be fine with doing that. Just leave a comment and let me know and I will definitely do that. So let's reverse our stage two pistons and I will uh, let you guys take a peek once this is just breaching our pilot drill hole and starting to come through. All right, so here's just a quick look at the drill heads coming through to our pilot hole. So we can see here that as they're extending, the second stage pistons are all at 8.6 meters right now. So once they get to 10, it should get a decent portion of this lower deposit here, totally cleaning out the lower one. And then I'm gonna move them up and core out the second phase of the horizontal rotation. So. Once that is complete, I'll be back and we'll take a look at exactly how much cobalt this has yielded for us. Alright, so the drill is stable, the pistons are retracted, and I've raised it back to our secondary horizontal depth, which is 1.55 meters per pistons. Now I am going to engage the stage 1 horizontal drill pistons. I uh, just thought I'd give you guys a look. Just before it starts, we've got this whole shelf here that's going to get mined out. And this strain right here that's come through. Now we can see it continues right there. So possibly is an additional drill spot we might want to go that direction. And we also have this deposit right here which points this direction. So if we were going to get all of the cobalt we would definitely be going to do a third hole uh, directly above the first two. But I will be back when this is done and I will get the cargo containers sorted before I resume the video so that we can just see exactly how much cobalt we have from this. Alright, so we are all finished. Uh, this has been four full extensions of the horizontal drills. I went ahead and threw some lights up in here just so that we could see the final result. Uh, coming out through here, you can see it got pretty much everything in this corner. And then over here, there's a very minor deposit off in this direction. So it looks like we have at least three more holes most likely that we're gonna have to do that's talking horizontal extension only um, anyway let's go up and see how much we have actually gotten from this so if I filter this to just large cargo containers and hide all of my empties you can see that we have one two three four five six seven eight nine ten 10 completely, nope, sorry, 11 completely full large cargo containers of cobalt, and then 311,000 kilograms in a 12th container. So overall, I would say that that was a very successful test, seeing how much cobalt we could get from underneath the ice lake. Get a nice zoomed out view here of our two holes. Now, uh, I am going to put in the description a link to the blueprint for this as it is configured now. I will retract the drill, move it off, and create a fresh blueprint file that I will add in the description. I will also put printed out the proper settings for the depth pistons and the horizontal pistons. So that way anybody who's trying to lower this uh, 
extend the drill, they will have the proper settings to reference if they do need them. Anyway, if you have made it this far, I really do appreciate you watching. Once again, I'm trying to come up with names for this thing, so if you have any good ideas for that, go ahead and leave a comment with the name. And this is Lux signing off.